Here we're going to be going through an example of a non-monetary exchange of some property, plant, and equipment, or long-term assets here. And our example is going to be where a company is going to trade in some, an old machine here for a new machine, and it's going to involve some cash as well here. First thing we have to look at is our rules here on these exchanges of non-monetary assets here. And I've got to, you've got to go through these steps here when you're dealing with these problems. Number one, you have to compute if there's any total gain or loss of the asset given up, and that's it's fair value here less the book value determines then if there's any gain or loss in our example here we're going to have a gain here on this uh, on this exchange here and number two here if there's any loss you recognize the entire loss immediately here and number three if there's any gain then you have to de deal with you determine if there's any commercial substance here or if there isn't any commercial substance and in our case we're going to have uh, we're going to be dealing with both of these cases here so what we mean by commercial substance here let's just go down and look at it that's if the exchange has commercial substance if future cash flows change the economic position here. And we're going to look at both cases here. So um, uh, first, again, we're going to be looking at here at the case where we got uh, commercial substance and then uh, looking at where there isn't any commercial substance here, then we'd have to step through these other procedures here. No cash involved, no gain, some cash given up, no gain. And this is going to be the case here. Some cash is going to be given up, but there is going to be gain here because we have a rule or regulation here that overrides that. If the cash exchange is greater than 25% of the fair value of the exchange, then you recognize the entire gain. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this problem. So let's go and look at our problem itself here. So Corporation A purchases a new machine by trading in its old machine and paying the balance in cash in the following in the following relates to this purchase here so we're going to have the list price of the new machine that isn't going to come into play in this example then there's going to be the cash paid here the cost of the old machine here that's sitting on the books and then the accumulated depreciation of the old machine here and then this is key here the market value of this old machine and that's actually its fair value here so let's first look at the case here we have the exchange has commercial substance here and uh, the point is just look at the definitions here and how we make these calculations so that's the important thing here so first the book value of the old machine that's the cost of the old machine that's sitting on the books here less any accumulated depreciation of the old machine here and uh, that gives you the cost here less the accumulated depreciation that's the book value of the old machine in this case $9,400 now, uh, to determine any gain on our disposal, well, we take the fair value of the old machine. That was its market value up here. Let's just go look at that. Our market value here, 10400 That's the fair value of the old machine here. And then the book value, of the, we subtract out the book value of the old machine here. Remember, we calculated that up here. And the difference gives us a total gain on the disposal. In this case, we have a gain here of $1,000 on this exchange or the disposal here of this old machine for the new one. Now, let's look at the, how we calculate the cost of a new machine. Well, the cash paid. We paid $20,000 on, on this exchange. We had to pay extra $20,000 plus the trade-in. Then we take the fair value of the old machine. Remember, we uh, that was uh, $10,400 up here. And that was uh, the market value here of the old machine. And then adding those two together, we come up with the cost of the new machine here, $30,400. So now we have to deal with uh, re making the recording here, recording the journal entries for this transaction. First, let's say we would debit or increase our new machine account here for $30,400. And that was the cost of the new machine here. Then we would be removing our, our old machine off the books. So we'd be debiting our accumulated depreciation here for the old machine here. And then we would be crediting or removing the old machine at its cost here of $25,400 off the books here. But now this is where we recognize the gain here on our disposal. So the, we had the gain. Remember, we calculated that up here to be $1,000. So our gain on our disposal, that would be going to our income statement here. So we'd credit uh, that for $1,000. And then we'd also, the balance amount here has to go through the cash paid. That was the cash that was paid out. So we 
we'd be reducing our cash here by twenty thousand dollars for this for these uh, trade in here now let's look at the case here where we had the where the exchange lacks commercial substance and remember we talked about that so if there's no commercial substance then we uh, there would and there was and there was in this case some cash in a uh, given here uh, we would normally not recognize any gain there wouldn't be any gain here but we have this overriding rule here the gain in this case is not deferred because the cash to boot is greater than 25 percent of the fair value of the exchange remember we went through that rule here on, on our exchange rules here for these non-monetary assets so uh, the cash in this case twenty thousand dollars that was the uh, cash that was paid or given here in this divide that by the fair value of the exchange that was thirty thousand four hundred dollars that's the value of our new machine here the fair value of the exchange here and the, the fractional or dividing those out here you come up with sixty six percent so uh, the uh, cash exchanged here was sixty percent sixty six percent of the fair value of the exchange so in this case since it's greater than 25% of the fair value, you recognize the entire gain here of $1,000. So in the case here where the exchange did lack commercial substance, we still recognize the gain only because our cash amount here was uh, paid out, was greater than 25% here of the fair value. Now let's look at the uh, situation here just to go over it real briefly. If the gain is deferred, say we actually deferred this gain, um, this is what we would have, the calculation we'd have to make here. So the cost of the new machine here, again, that was $30,400 that we calculated. But we would be subtracting out the gain deferred here. We wouldn't have recognized the gain here of $1,000. So the difference here gives us the basis of the new machine here. In this case, $30,400 less the $1,000 gain here gives us the basis of the new machine here at $29,400. So I just wanted to go through this in case you were wondering here about how we'd handle it if the gain was deferred not going through the journal entries here but then let's just go back here and look at it one more time here here's your book value of the old machine you can look at that here the gain on the disposal here and then the cost of the new machine so these are the three items that you'd have to calculate out here and then using your calculations here then you can make your journal entries here. So that takes care of the problem here where we had a, uh, a, a Corporation A purchased the new machine here by trading in its old machine and then they also had to pay some cash or, the, or boot on this trade-in.